this is Jeremiah. We're back, and we're ready to go. We're ready to roll here with you and uh, get into. Uh, we're going to get into Scorpio and Sagittarius right now, and uh, I want to share with you uh, a couple of items as we roll along here. We're, this is going to go rather quickly as we move into these other uh, uh, astrological signs. Because we just don't have, the, there's not that much I want to go over with you. This can go on forever. There are some people that have hundreds of pages that will go into detail for every single star group and whatever. For those of you who are inclined to do so, then you can go do that, right? I am not inclined to do so, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with a, a, a cursory look and... Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm ready to get back into faith again. I'm going to give another lesson, and I'm going to really uh, work on this one so that you can really get a good idea of what, basic, what the basics are to Christian faith, okay? And uh, that's it. As we get going, we say Maranatha uh, um, over and over again here. I just referenced uh, our wonderful brother Paul in his chapter there. Uh, 16.22, there you go, 1 Corinthians, Maranatha. So here we are, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant, we're going to get right into this. We greet you in the only name given amongst men by which you must be saved. We're rejoicing every video here, we talk about love and the love of God. Every video almost, you know, just, we take our time now and we focus on the coming of the Lord big time now. You know, people who have watched my videos, God is calling them to get into Bible study, obviously and to study and to be, be a scribe and also to be a scribe that enters in. And that's the focus here, not to, just, not to just be a scribe, but to be a scribe that enters in, okay? Now, and that's what they're gonna, we're here to, to uh, make sure we got some good marathon runners here because Christianity is a marathon in general. Now, let's get to Scorpio number three, number one, number one and number two. I've already been through, uh, you know, we, we, we've beaten that up and we've really, did, I think we did a good job on giving you basic ideas as to the coming of Jesus Christ, which is the child and the mother, the motherhood and the divine conception and so forth, and some of the aspects pertaining to what he's going to do, and, um, and it's going to be a powerful child and so forth, and of course he has to face the scales. The first thing he has to focus on, and the main thing, is what the master said he was focused on, which was the successful purchase and to uh, do exactly what Father has commanded him to do in his body form as the Son of Man, okay? Now, as the kinsman redeemer, your fellow human being who is going to get you out of jail legally. Now, let's go to Scorpio, which means uh, basically... It is a scorpion. Scorpions in, in basic, uh, they're basically what? They're basically, uh, let me see if I can fix this uh, camera here. Hold on. One moment. Um, we've got a camera problem. Give me a second here. I hate to, hate to sh shake this thing up for you here. That's a little better. And it's still not right. That's okay. They're going to move on. Um, a scorpion is something that comes to you face to face, but what they don't show you is their stinger. And that is the essence of deception. The essence of being deceived, seduced, and so forth. These, term, these terms refer to someone facing you, but you're not getting the, the real person. I want to point that out, that that's really what's, what's going on here. Now, Christ is perceptive, and he is, the next, the next uh, sign, he is Sagittarius. Sagja means wise, so he is intelligent enough to see that there's a stinger there. But humans, uh, when they were deceived in the Garden of Eden, they didn't see the stinger, they just saw a friend. Hey, you, is that what God really said? Is that really a commandment? Same thing happens in the New Testament in the parable of the sower 
where people hear the gospel and the devil comes along and he tells them that they don't have to go through the procedures that they've been commanded to do, which is go to the sun and love the sun. So the devil's there to get them to say, no, let's watch basketball. Let's go do this. Let's go to the bar around the corner. Let's, let's, let's worship money and get two jobs. Let's enjoy our home and relax and worship our homes, cars, whatever. Uh, anything besides, aside from the love of Jesus Christ and his commandments and his teachings. Okay? And that's what the scorpion does. He draws you in and tells you that it's okay to not love the sun, but, but there's a stinger on the tail. And that stinger is, is that you're going to get stung by being fooled that you can get away with not loving Jesus Christ. And the stinger's going to get you. And that's why the, the Lord has allowed the deceiver to be out in the world, because he's going to find out who loves him. Who loves people, who loves God, who loves the truth. And he's going to find out, because they're going to be out there in the world, and out there in the field. They have a song here in America with it, out there in the field. So out, and this is where we find who's who out here. We, we being tried. God told Moses, I tried you. I'm going to try you. you know, I'm, I'm going to offer love and see if that's what you really want. That's what essentially Christianity is. At the heart of the whole matter, isn't it? You know, do I, do I love God? Do I love his, his, uh, his teachings? Do I, do I want to turn away from evil when I, when I, when I don't have to? And all this wraps up in, into Christianity. Now, let's get back to Stinger. And the Stinger of the devil is going to get the heel of Jesus Christ. Okay? But the heel does not kill him. It only kills his body, but he can't die. And that, that stinger actually is what gave birth to the church. The devil thought he was hurting the, hurting the Son of God because that's what he does. Everything he sees, he just goes and hurts it. He doesn't really think about hurting. He just wants to hurt the devil's a wild man, gone wild. He's just going out there, well, who can I who can I destroy? Well, unfortunately, he didn't think, and he destroyed only the heel of Jesus Christ. And of course, guess what happened? It birthed an entire kingdom of God. Legally. Now we have Akra, which is a star in a star area, which means conflict or war. So what we're dealing with with our third. Uh, group of stars here. You can see that with uh, Hercules and serpents and the foot and the scorpion. There are three images that are closely related in the sky, okay? And what we're dealing with, of course, is uh, some Greek words and words of Ophiuchus, which is serpent fighter, and Antares, which means under the feet of Christ, and that is that the powers are under. So that's why we have the moon under the woman in the book of Revelation, because weak powers are always under the stronger powers. In other words, God has let the devil roam around for 6,000 years, but pretty soon that power will be vanquished. But for 6,000 years and during the tribulation period, those powers will be roaming around and exercising their powers. Let me add some negativity here, if we say in America. There was a rap guy, whatever they call him, and he says he's a musician, but I, I might question that. But he, he says he's a musician, they say, and he wrote a song or something recently that said, Jesus can't help you. So obviously he, had, he is uh, some sort of very evil person, and he seeks to confront we Christians and our master. And this gentleman is on television quite often. I've seen him before. And uh, here's my point. In a, way, it's, in a way, he's telling the truth that, that power is given to the beast. Power is given to the devil. And that's just the way it is. But it's, it's a temporary situation. 
It's kind of like the police department shut down for the weekend. And they know there's bad guys roaming around, but they're, they're, we'll, be, we'll show up Monday. We'll lock them up Monday. And then by the time Monday comes here, we have evidence to really prove what kind of person they are and so on. I mean, we have tons of evidence and we can lock them up legally. And that's what's kind of happening here is that uh, people are allowed to roam around here, you know, in a mad, mad, mad world. And, and, and there are a lot of evil powers all over the place and it frustrates people. And that's why the Bible says we groan because we see the evil, we groan. It, it, it's an exasperating experience because it's frustrating that we can't necessarily stop a bad politician or we can't stop, you know, this bad person or that bad person. What's the bottom line? The bottom line is, is that we're just rejoicing in the fact that, that, uh, we, that, that God didn't set all this in motion and he, he's going to fix it all once and for all, okay? We, we can see the, 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 the big words are probably in Revelation chapter 16 at the end of the chapter. Okay, it is done, it's finished. And that's, that's God talking, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is talking and saying, it's over. All this, all this stuff is over, all this stinger, all this lying and cheating and whatever, and, and, and we groaning here on this earth and, and groaning, I turn my TV on and, and they're talking about hurting children or something, whatever. All this stuff, it, is, it makes us groan. You know, they have Fox News in America, which is really like a big groaning station. But the problem with that is, is that we're not here just to groan. We're also here to groan, but we're also here to rejoice, okay? And we rejoice in these long sufferings, and we rejoice in these oppositions and this persecution, okay? We're rejoicing in these difficult circumstances also. Okay? Christianity is the happy, it's the happy, sad face. In, in the American theater, it's, it's the, you know, the frowning face and the happy face. And that's just the way it goes. Now, of course, when everything's all wrapped up, there'll be no more stingers, there'll be no more, you know, uh, we, uh, there's no more fighting the serpent. Ophiuchus is a serpent fighter from the stars, the names of the stars, in the constellation called Scorpio. Well, let, let's talk about that for a moment. The Lord has already fought the serpent, and he's won. So that means that your fighting is going to be facilitated. That's the point. Paul said, fight the good fight. So we have to fight too. However, what's wonderful about our fight is that we're fighting under a supervisor who's basically already won. That's the point. And all we have to do is resist evil and love righteousness, and we're winners. Snap, crackle, pop. You're going to win the fight, and you're going to fight the serpent just like the master did, and you're going to win just like he did. He rejected evil and loved righteousness, and he loved Father, and he kept the love of Father in his heart, and what the Father wanted, and he's a winner, and that's what you're going to do. You're going to be a winner too. Now, you're not going to pay for your sins, but you're going to do what you need to do, which is required. You're going to have to fight the serpent, and you're going to have to toughen up. You know, David told Solomon, basically, man up. I, I can go to that scripture, but we're, we're, we're going to let that go. But he told him, he, man up. I, I think that Solomon was a little spoiled. He had a bad kid, so to speak. He's off, obviously very bright uh, intellectually, but he's a little on the spoiled side. A little, uh, I don't know. And, and, and I think David told him right before he passed away, because he, he rules 40 years. Solomon rules 40 years and so forth. But, you know, I think that he was, but we'll let that go. Man up, be a man. And I just found that, uh, you can find that in your uh, Isaiah, or it's in the Old Testament quite a few times, where men are basically told to be men. I had a lady talk to me the other day, and she was talking to me, and I could tell that she didn't understand that we Quaker Christian types we men are men. We, we don't have any time for any homosexual discussions or, or you know, all, all this kind of stuff is out, is out the box for us. We don't have, that's out the door, you know, that's uh, out the door. We don't, I don't have time for any of that. 
Why? Because I'm a man. That's why. I'm there's not time for any of these, you know, uh, speculations or conversations. Or, or, or am I a leader or I'm not a leader? No, I, I don't have any confusion in this area. You know, as far as being a Bible teacher, I, I've been in charge of, of church, or church peoples off and on in my life. And, uh, and, 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 and that even goes for students in school. I've had hundreds of students. Hundreds of students that, that God created in, in their mother's womb, and I was responsible for them, and I took that responsibility very serious, uh, seriously because I was the leader. I was in charge. And I knew I was the leader. And, and, and with that comes responsibility and accountability. And it's, it's a, a slightly nervous position to be in because you want things to go well. That, right? Yeah. You don't want anyone reproaching you and questioning and what, what's what you're doing and how good you're doing it and so forth. But, uh, no, most people don't want to hear that. It kind of hurts your feelings. It hurts your, you know, your what they call self-esteem or whatever. You let, Let's move on. So uh, we, we talked about Antares and Ophiuchus and what we're dealing with is Power, power structure, and and a and a fight for authority and so forth. And so we have a lot to. And I'm going to let go of all of this, but under the feet of Christ, Antares. So you're talking about something whereby that the 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 head, excuse me, the head of the uh, scorpion is being crushed. But the foot is being hurt, and that, of course, deals with the the uh, the cross. So even though the head and the authority legally on the earth was given to Jesus Christ through the successful purchase, the foot was hurt, or in this case, the entire body was put on the cross. And suffered miserably. Now, here's the deal. This is a conflict and a war, and that's what Scorpio basically represents with Sagittarius. See, kind of Libra and and Virgo work together, and Scorpio and and Sagittarius work well together because the arrow is probably also pointed. If my memory is correct, the arrow is pointed at the Scorpion. And that deals with accuracy and intelligence that the Lord is going to fight with the Father. They're going to get into this uh, in encounter with the devil, and they're going to legally win the authority that he's been given. Because God gave him the authority of the earth when he was kicked out of heaven. He was told that basically that he, he, he has hell, which is below the earth, and he can also roam and control the top of the earth. And even on top of that, he can go up and down through the waters and the dome and the clouds to go to heaven and make complaints. So he can move around quite a bit. However, in the middle of the tribulation period, which is going to come up any time now, uh, you're looking any day now for the tribulation and the three and a half years that lead to the dragon. The red dragon is going to be kicked out of the heavens forever. He will never be able to go to the heavens again. He won't be able to fly up in the clouds or whatever he does. He won't be able to do it anymore. He's stuck to the earth, and pretty soon he's going to be stuck to under the earth. So he keeps getting lowered and lowered and lowered. Why? Because he deserves it. That's why. Okay? Now, the conflict and the war is the opposer is hasatan, it means to oppose. And what he's opposing is, essentially, is righteousness and peace and love. He's opposing it. And he's also accusing men who are Christians of their behavior that is incorrect, such as sin and transgression. He is going to heaven, and evidently, he has spokespeople, 
he is speaking against those people who are growing in grace uh, as Christians. Fortunately for you, you have an eternal high priest who stands there and they're allowing the accuser to talk. But after he gets done talking, he's wasting his time because the, the, uh, the, the representative you have, the abogado, the defender, the lawyer, is constantly telling the king or the ruler or the judge that uh, you, can't, you can't touch him. I, I've, I've already removed that error. So that's an ongoing situation of litigation, right? And juris, jurisprudence and so forth. Now, let's let that go. So we, what we have is we have legal ruler, the legal ruler of the earth is in charge and God's given him that dominion legally. Now, when Christ is resurrected, he loses that legal authority. God does everything legally. He's a righteous judge. He makes judgments and they stand. And in this case, we have the scorpion who is getting ready to have everything removed from the previous sign. The previous sign is going to remove all of the conditions legally that stand over a man or Adam's family. So pretty soon there's going to be no more accuser of those who are Christians and the snake and the hydra are now being crushed. Serpent fighter. The Lord had to wrestle with the devil on the earth basically for three years. He was confronted with fake preachers and people who were not really Christians who said they were and so forth, or, or, or uh, uh, temple uh, priests and so forth, and he had to face them and talk to them, and they had debates, and, and people tried to kill our lovable master. They tried to murder him a couple times, and so he had to deal with that. And that's fighting. That's wrestling with the enemy, right? And then Jesus disappeared because they tried to murder him. Well, there you go. That, 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 that can't be comfortable because he's 100% man and 100% God. So we have this legal ruler. Uh, uh, he is called the twisted one, the liar and the deceiver. And of course, that deals with what? That deals with the deceiver or the one who presents himself as not really what he is. Okay? The Bible says the devil can present himself as an angel of light. He can pretend. And the Lord is allowing all this to happen so that he can find out who's who in this whole mix. Okay? And we, we talk about, let's talk about Ra's al -Gedi. That's the head of him that crushes. And the head of him that crushes is the Avengers. The Avengers is going to crush the head. In other words, you have the, the individual who is God, or Jesus Christ. He's going to destroy, and he's going to crush the head of the enemy of mankind. Job 26, 13, by his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. This goes back over to our science lesson when we talked about the star. That, 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 that God garnished the heavens, or more specifically, what did he garnish? He garnished the astrodome with stars. And he put in that dome of hard glass that, that Job tells us, he put in there the image of that long hydra or the serpent. And that's a reference to the, the, uh, the image of the actual personage of the devil and so forth. And we can see that, that all this is not by accident. This is by design. And our Lord is a wonderful artist. And we can see that. He's the original artist. And the Bible says that when God created things, he did it with passion and feeling. In other words, he really enjoys creating things, and he's really into it, as we say in America. Okay. Now we have the 12 stars. I've showed you once again where we have the 12 star groups, and you can see that these uh, images, 
don't have a lot of appendages and so forth, but you can see that, that those images are correct as far as the star names goes. And, uh, and we're done with Scorpio. Scorpio's an easy lesson here. Uh, I, I mentioned Ra's al Gedi, meaning a group of stars, and a star, or rather a star which is on the head of Hercules there. And, um, and, uh, and there's a Ruga there, which I left out. We're, we're going to let that go, which is the great shepherd, okay, the one who's in charge of all of the sheep and so forth. There are other things I could mention, but we're, we're going to move on, okay? We're going to go on to Sagittarius, which means a wise one that is two-natured. That's what it means. Tarius and so forth, and Taurus and all of this. And uh, it, it usually means m multiple uh, personalities and so forth, or like a sphinx in Egypt. Okay? So we have Genesis 1.14, and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens for signs. So now we have signs, and that's why we call them signs, okay? This sign right now is number four, Sagittarius. I'm going to share something with you about that. What we have here is we have a half human, a half animal, or a horse. And what that means is that the top half is God, and the bottom half is the man. In other words, we have... We have a two-natured being, and we have uh, we have Habakkuk three eleven. At the light of thine arrows, they went at the shining of thy glittering spirit. So when they saw the, the arrows coming, they were afraid, basically. And the glittering spear is the arrow. And when people and demons and people who are bad see the good people coming, the intelligent people shake because they know that they're going to have to face judgment because that's what the devil's facing, judgment. And Sagittar is the Jesus Christ, two natures. He's going after and he's going to shoot an arrow and that arrow is going to go right at the heart of the matter and fix the problem. Legally, precisely, and effectively. And the power that it's going to require to do this is going to be a lot of power because the God gave the scorpion a lot of power. But his power is omniscient. It's much wiser and it's much more powerful than anything he's going to create because the scorpion is created. Okay? And he's going to be super wise. Sag or sage means wise and intelligent. And we, we're, we're, and we rejoice in the God of our salvation because he is wise. And, and he knew what to do to successfully, and he, he put out the energy. If we look at the scripture, I and my father both work in John chapter 5, that they're working hard and they're working to complete all of this uh, redemption plan and to have it come into fruition and to be successful, okay? And uh, we have a lot of things going on, and uh, we have 12 signs here re referenced in 114 of Genesis that, that we have 12 different aspects to this whole plan of redemption and people getting saved, and which leads to some of the character of God. Because God is not just a Savior, He's also God. God doesn't need to be a savior. He chose to be a savior. He's very happy being God. That's quite obvious. Revelation 19, 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, rule them, of course, going into a rod of iron and so forth. That this, of course, is going to refer to a couple of things. Because we're in the tribulation period in Revelation 19, and we are in the last uh, trumpet, and we're dealing with Babylon being corrected, and then we're going into the 1,000-year reign of Christ chronologically, okay? That's where 19 is. It is the end of Babylon. It's all over for the wicked people. All the mean people, are, whether they're rich 
which is uh, Revelation 17, talking about how rich they are, uh, 18 rather, and uh, the church leaders who are doing bad things, uh, very bad things, and the money involved, which is uh, 17 and 18 respectively, uh, of Babylon, they're, they're, they're going down. And when they go down, the, the, we start mentioning the 1,000 year reign of Christ, okay? The cr chronologically correct. We're going to stop right here. We'll be right back with 40 something here. I'll, I'll enumerate it later, okay? We're rejoicing together with you in the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be in the presence of our Lord, which I just looked at in Thessalonians. Okay? Revelation 19 15. We'll be right back with. We're almost done with Sagittarius, Maranatha. <laughs>